Hi everyone, my name is Gloria Burnett and I'm the Alaska AHEC program coordinator or director, I guess. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> but we are here today to celebrate the Rural Immersion Institute of the North, our second year. Uh, this was a, a program we piloted last summer and we're planning to continue. We're really excited for this next group of students that are here to share their experiences with us. Uh, our students are from the lower 48, one student from here in Alaska, and the rest of the students have come from all across the country up to Alaska to share their uh, love for rural health and interest in rural health, and we hope that someday when they're all done with their graduate school programs and they have their licensures in hand, that they will bless us with their ability to practice here in our great state. So thank you all for your time, and thank you for coming and joining us. Uh, Dave Barry, I'd like to thank a special thanks to him for all the hard work he put into this program. He has seriously made this just a magnificent experience for all of you, and I'm really happy to have him on staff. And for all the, us, the rest of our, yeah, thank you, Dave. <laughs> and also the rest of the AHEC staff behind the scenes, Pat, who did a lot. She was our, our we'll call her a Rin mom. <laughs> She was here for all of you through a lot of experiences, through, too, and we appreci appreciate all your time that you've dedicated, and everyone behind the scenes helping make this a reality, especially our rural partners out there that are listening in virtually right now. Thank you for everything you've done to set, that, set up these experiences for the RIN program. Um, and without further ado, I'm going to call up each team. First, we're going to start off with our first team, Team A. They're going to introduce themselves to you, and then they're going to share their digital stories, which document their experiences during the RIN program. So Team A, come on up. Hi, I'm Madison Hooper. I'm from Oklahoma, and I went to Barrow. Uh, hi, I'm Pranjal. Uh, I'm from Atlanta. I recently graduated with bachelor's in biology, and I went to Ketchikan. Hi, I'm Amanda, and I went to Bethel, and I'm the one that's from Anchorage. Here's our presentation. <laughs> Barrow is the furthest city north in the U.S. I now have a totally different perspective on what it means to be on top of the world. When I was in Barrow, I dealt a lot with the public health and behavioral health, and the health providers were very strong on the preventative wellness and inspiring that you have to have good mental health in order to have good physical health. Uh, the native people aren't really totally motivated to get out, do stuff, and be healthy besides their traditional ways of doing things. So it's important for them that they feel invested in and inspired. Back during the Project Chariot, which is when um, we tested atomic bombs about 30 miles from Point Hope, the natives believed that the radiation affected their traditional foods, and that is some of the reasons why they have certain types of cancer. And so they kind of have some trust issues with the white people. So in order for the natives to feel like the white people are invested in their community, they like to see the white people stick around for about three to five years or longer because a lot of people just come and go and don't really enjoy it. But one thing I learned is that if I really want to be invested in a rural native community and make an impact, I need to stick around and be really serious about the place. Filled with wildlife, embraced by mountains, flanked by glaciers, and surrounded by parkland, our iconic adventure began in Anchorage. 
Anchorage is a home to members of each native Alaskan cultural group. We experience the traditions of Alaska native life, both past and the present, at the Alaska Native Heritage Center. A short visit to Alaska Native Health Consortium prepared us to fly out to rural sites. Before heading to rural sites, we took a trip to Seward. Situated at a resurrection bay, Seward is Alaska's most beautiful and oldest communities. Knowing the unique requirements to be encountered, I left for the remarkable city of Ketchikan. Ketchikan is Alaska's most vibrant community. Nature makes it extraordinary, history makes it unique, and heritage makes it Ketchikan. Shadowing at a Ketchikan Medical Center was more than just a clinical experience for me. I could really feel like how it is to become a part of community and to face the challenges that the healthcare deals with. Ketchikan Medical Center is trying to address all the needs of community in one place. The center also has visiting specialties that work with them on contract. I learned that more rural you are, the more integrated your care. Due to integrated care becoming more dominant, the communication is essential. During my time in Ketchikan Medical Center, I was exposed to all different types of communications between patients and providers and providers with one another. Even a slightest twist in this chain can cause frustrations to all the parties involved but the staff at the center were able to handle all the challenges with ease. In Ketchikan Public Health Center, the preventative care is a huge focus to minimize the need of higher level of care. All clinicians are trained to detect when a patient may be experiencing emotional or mental distress during the visit. I could shadow the only psychiatric nurse in the center. She addressed all the behavioral needs of entire community. At the center, physicians and nurse practitioners also treat patients who visit them from small islands nearby. Ketchikan Medical Center is the closest facility to these islands that can deal with emergencies. In Alaska, people need an extra dose of internal warmth to compensate for harsh environment. Through this program, I met some great people including my host family, my supervisors at AHIC office in Alaska and doctors and nurse practitioners. And I made great friends in this adventure. This rural immersion experience will set me aside from other students when I apply to graduate schools, which are very high on my wish list. I'm gratified to no ends for this opportunity. Thank you.
Hello, I hope you enjoyed my video for Bethel and Aniac. I did not do a voiceover, so I will be doing a short reflection on what I experienced during my 10 day stay in rural Alaska. Yeah, so background. Even though I was born and raised in Anchorage, Alaska, I was actually really ignorant to what rural medicine actually is. Strangely, I thought Anchorage was rural medicine, but after going to Bethel and Antioch, I know that's not true and now I actually know what rural medicine actually is and looks like. Um, it was actually really amazing because even though there wasn't much to do besides outdoor activities such as kayaking and the subsistence lifestyle of hunting, fishing, and gathering, it forced me to really break out of my comfort zone of the big city life and actually see what people do in Bethel and Antioch do to make life enjoyable and pass time in a city where there's nothing to do. Um, by the end of 10 days though, and talking to so many amazing like people and hearing their stories from healthcare providers and patients, I found that the rural communities in Alaska are unlike anything I've experienced before and I really enjoyed it because, because there's really nothing to do there so you have to love what you do and you have to love the subsistence lifestyle and you don't get distracted by all the everyday distractions that you would find in a city such as things like what am I gonna wear, am I gonna be on time? What am I gonna eat for dinner? Like, it's just a different lifestyle out in rural Alaska, and it's something that I truly do enjoy. Just being off the clock and off the grid, and not abiding to any strict, just day to day routine, and trying to relieve my stress through like Netflix or like shopping or wine. <laughs> I really recommend this program to anyone who even has slight interest in rural medicine or just medicine at all because it really shows you a different side to medicine that you cannot experience in the city so yeah this is my reflection from the 2017 cohort of the rural immersion institute of the north thank you for watching You guys went to uh, all different parts of Alaska. Mm -hmm. um, would you guys go back um, day after you get your life insurance? And do you think that this program kind of helps uh, you guys to use that position? Possibly. I don't know. Kind of want to go back in the winter time. <laughs> oh, do you? <laughs> <laughs> and I get the full experience, right? <laughs> Gotta see the full experience. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yes, uh, I'm sure I will if I get a chance. And this program definitely 
helped us to introduce to all the all sorts of um, the practices that they have there. And I absolutely fell in love with Ketchikan, and I would love to go back there. I think that beforehand, I wanted to go to all these like rural medical school programs, even though I didn't know what rural medicine was. But after going to Bethel and Antioch, I can actually truly say that I want to go into rural medicine, especially after going to Bethel and seeing how many villages feed in and how like there are no like specialty physicians. So family medicine doctors literally do everything there. I thought that was pretty amazing. So just because of the disparity and because my home is close, it's in eighth grade, so it's only an hour flight. And I feel like being near your family is important too. So I think personally, I want to go back to Bethel just because it's near home and being in a lot of physicians there. Yeah. Awesome. One more question. <laughs> how, how cold was that water? <laughs> it was pretty cold. <laughs> it was actually a nice day, so it wasn't that bad. Yeah, you out. yeah right? That was yeah. the last day I was there, and it just happened to be sunny because it was pretty cloudy and windy the rest of the time. It was worth it. Polar <laughs> plunge was worth it. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Uh, hi, my name is Rachel Lundy. I'm from Oregon City, Oregon, and I'm a rising senior at Oregon State University studying pre-pharmacy, and um, my rural site was Petersburg. Hey guys, my name is Evan Pham. I'm from Oregon. I'm also an Oregon State University student. I'm majoring in kinesiology with a pre-medical option, and I went to Soldatna for my rural site. Petersburg is a small town nestled in on Mitkoff Island. Approximately 1,800 residents live there year-round, and in the summer, the population swells to around 3,000. Petersburg is a small fishing community that is marked with Norwegian influences, which can be seen in much of the architecture of the buildings. But what really makes Petersburg Petersburg is the people. Given that Petersburg is on an island, it is inevitable that it is a tight-knit community. There's an indescribable relationship between providers and patients that is formed in this setting. The patient you saw in the clinic could very well work at the grocery store, the fire department, or even the local coffee shop. During my time there in Petersburg, I had the pleasure of shadowing at the Petersburg Medical Center and Rexel's Pharmacy. I observed the hurdles medical providers go through, but more importantly, how rewarding it is to practice in a rural community. The medical staff is challenged daily by the varying health needs of the patients. They are asked to rise above and beyond what is printed in their job descriptions. From doing physical therapy appointments on the weekend, to scheduling vet scans in the radiology department, to making prescription deliveries to long-term and assisted living. Quality of care was upheld even when specialties weren't available. Going rural offers its challenges, but also its rewards. Petersburg taught me the great lengths necessary to provide outstanding care and the coordination and dependency between healthcare departments. The sights, sounds, and people will welcome you into Petersburg and will make living on an island worthwhile. Off the top of my head, I'd say my last in summer was full of awesome sights and adventures. I love the outdoors, and whether I was hiking or kayaking, I could always appreciate Alaska's natural scenery. For my rural assignment, I traveled to Soldatna. It wasn't your typical Alaskan rural experience, being on the road system as well as having a relatively larger population which is known to more than double in the summer. Running through Saldana is the Kenai River, which is what attracts the many fishing and hunting enthusiasts from all over the world. I spent my days at Central Peninsula Hospital, which serves the medical needs of the region's residents and tourists. I'm really thankful for being able to shout out orthopedic surgeon, from observing the various surgeries in the OR, to seeing a myriad of patients in the clinic, I was really able to get a feel for where I wanted to be in the world of healthcare. I'll never forget Alaska's natural beauty, and I definitely won't forget the people I met here. From the residents, to the RIN staff, to my fellow RIN students, I always felt like I was in good company. I had a fun time here, and I hope that the following slideshow can give you a sense of my experience.
All right. Hi, everyone. We're Team C. I'm Melanie Langa. I'm originally from Ann Arbor, Michigan, um, and I just completed a post back program this year, so I'm applying to medical school right now, and I went to Dillingham. Hi everybody, I'm Jackie. Um, I am from Lehigh, Pennsylvania, and I go to a school outside of Philly. Um, I'm a pre-med student going into my fourth year um, at our Sinus College, and I'm, I'm, I'm applying to med school right now. And I went to Homer and Soldovia. Hi, I am Ashley King. I am our third Oregon Stater, and I just graduated with a degree in microbiology, and I went to Ketchikan. My experience in Alaska has been like no other. From the start of the program, I've learned so much about how different healthcare is in this rural setting. From learning all about Alaska Native culture to the process of delivering healthcare in these native villages, Rune has given an inside view to Alaskan health. There's an extremely wide range of Alaskan Natives and understanding their customs and traditions is extremely important in delivering the best care for optimal outcomes. It's so important for healthcare providers to recognize these facets of their culture in order to treat properly and effectively. And even in the main city, they still have to understand rural care for the system to work properly. From Anchorage to Seward to Homer to Seldovia, I've seen how different the system works here compared to the lower 48, and I've gained an appreciation for the ease of access to care I have. In Homer, although touristy, the residents still have many obstacles they face. I had the opportunity to take a ferry over to Seldovia, a village about an hour away from Homer, and shadow the Seldovia village tribe professionals. I spent time learning from women at a women's gathering, learning about the mind, body, and spirit and its connection to health. I also participated in their annual health fair. A community of about 300, accessible only by air or water, the members are very tight-knit. When treating patients, you were treating their mother, father, and entire family, which gave an interesting spin to the lifestyle of these professionals. I also recognized how much they had to take care of with a patient, unlike from what I've experienced. There aren't enough medical professionals to take care of each individual issue, and in Homer, I noticed that as well. Each patient who needed a specialist most likely had to schedule a trip to Anchorage, which is about six hours away. This put a burden on both the patients and medics, making the planning and preparation process extremely extensive. But the teamwork, dedication, patience, and hard work that the people have to make it all work is beyond amazing. I've been in awe with their ability to work with all these disparities and the skills that they possess. I'm so thankful for the time I've spent learning from everyone here. I'm grateful for the opportunity to travel to and in Alaska and to experience a different but amazing healthcare. I didn't know it at the time, but my first venture into town on this beautiful bike path and subsequent trips exploring Dillingham were thanks to the public health program I visited during my RIN shadowing experience. As I learned, successful public health efforts tend to be like that. You don't notice them when they're working well, blending into and supporting everyday life, creating the conditions for people to be healthy. Dillingham sits at the confluence of the Wood and Nushagak rivers. The bike path I used to explore the shore travels along both. Town sits on a tundra plain in the middle. There are berry picking opportunities galore, and a harbor where barges, fishing boats, and tenders navigate the tidal changes every day. The salmon return every summer, outnumbering people by millions. Commercial fishing for famous Bristol Bay salmon occupies summer days and nights in this community in southwestern Alaska. The public health office looks out over this harbor in the center of town, well positioned to communicate with the people and organizations that interact to promote health. Communication was an important theme throughout my time with Dillingham's healthcare providers. Whether fostering connections with local organizations or delivering a diagnosis, effective communication and the relationships built as a result were what made efforts at coordinating care successful. Shadowing with a public health nurse responsible for the Bristol Bay region, I learned how relationships among businesses, schools, government, and law enforcement can combine to affect and promote health. This placement taught me about efforts to keep the whole community and region healthy. We visited local businesses to provide information and education about statewide efforts to support opioid prevention and addiction treatment, and reviewed STI screening and immunization numbers in Dillingham and the surrounding communities. While at public health, I also studied the history and epidemiology of tuberculosis in southwestern Alaska and the efforts undertaken by the public health nursing program to identify, treat, and prevent the disease. 
Here again, it was clear that the most effective public health campaigns may not be visible or noticeable when they're successful. TB is no longer a statewide scourge it once was, but still, there are TB testing days at Dillingham and Bristol Bay Regional Schools in surrounding villages to identify potential outbreaks and stop them quickly. Down the road, on a bluff overlooking Nushagak Bay is Kanakanak Hospital, which serves Dillingham and surrounding villages spread over a 44,000 square mile area, which for comparison is about the same size as the state of Ohio. Throughout my time there, I shout out a number of the family practice physicians that staff the walk-in, family, and emergency clinics. Each day began with a check-in with the medical staff and representatives from the pharmacy, physical therapy, nursing, and once a week, the public health department where I had shadowed previously to discuss interesting or challenging patients and update people on ongoing initiatives and plan for the day. This spirit of communication and coordination permeated the care provided at Kanakanak and opened my eyes to the benefits of a small hospital and community environment with professionals who know their patients and their families. Effective communication happened both in and extended beyond the hospital. Every day, the physicians I shadowed called the community health aides in the villages for which they were responsible to discuss traffic at the clinic and determine what was best for each patient. When problems arose that couldn't be solved in a village clinic or at Kanakanak, a chain of communication connected patients with the care they needed in Anchorage or Seattle. Throughout my time in Dillingham, I came to appreciate the effort necessary to make plans or allow travel time, which isn't part of healthcare in other parts of the country or even the state where roads connect people to healthcare resources. In most of the Bristol Bay region, the only way to travel is on a boat or plane. The only village connected by a road to Dillingham is Aleknagik, where I visited the clinic and community health aid. Clinics like the one at Aleknagik work as an extension of Kanakanak's resources, helping provide services beyond the 30 or so miles of road that surround Dillingham. It's from these clinics that healthcare is dispensed and patients are funneled into the system until they are provided the care they need. While there are real economic, logistical, and temporal challenges to providing high quality care in rural places, considering only these challenges tells half the story. The other half is what I felt I gained a new appreciation for while in Dillingham. The ingenuity, creativity, and dedication of the people working and living in remote places. I'm grateful to have experienced so many aspects of the healthcare system in Dillingham but especially the way those pieces connect. I came to the RIN program to learn lessons about rural health, and I'm certainly coming away from my shadowing experience in Dillingham with an appreciation for the way that Kanakanak Hospital provides care over a large area for a diverse group of people, but also how these lessons might be taken from this setting and applied broadly to other situations. Perhaps it's easier to notice the close relationships with patients and staff, the way that care is coordinated from village clinics to regional hospitals and onto tertiary care in Anchorage, and the sensitivity to local culture and customs in a rural setting, but I'm convinced that all healthcare professionals should strive for that kind of continuity no matter where they work. Learning from healthcare professionals that worked in a wide variety of scenarios, but took the time to listen to patient concerns and consider important contextual factors about their lives as part of their care plan in each of these instances has made me even more interested in pursuing a future healthcare career in a rural setting. Thanks to everyone at Public Health, BBAHC, and beyond who made my stay in Dillingham so rewarding. I'll take the memories of the beauty of Dillingham's environment, especially these Wood River Mountains I got to look at every day, and the realities of rural health care, from my experience at RIN into my future training. Until next time, DLG, thanks for everything. Ketchikan. Six square miles of rural island life that provides health care to a population of more than 35,000 individuals in southern southeast Alaska. This rural town is centered in a temperate rainforest, receiving on average 141 inches of rainfall each year. The unique climate and limited access to advanced medical care makes it an ideal location to learn the needs of rural health care in the last frontier. So what are these needs and how are they provided for? One resource we were introduced to is the Ketchikan Health Coalition, a combined community task force that uses statistical analysis to identify the most behavioral health support needs throughout the community. Their recent community needs assessment collected information on substance abuse, suicide, and mental health, three very common issues found throughout the communities of Alaska. After the coalition, I joined up with the Ketchikan Public Health Center, 
which provides services from well baby checks to STD and HIV screenings. Alaska has the highest STD rates in the nation. As a community outreach attempt, the Public Health Center sent me to the local bars of Ketchikan with bags of condoms and even condom dispensers to install in the bathrooms and promote STD awareness and safe sex. My final stop was at the Ketchikan Peace Health Medical Center, shadowing a primary care physician and a pediatrician. Although this medical center is equipped with over eight types of clinics, it is still affected by the lack of immediate access to advanced care. To compensate, Peace Health puts a strong emphasis on patient and physician relationships and team communication. To assist in their expanding efforts, I was asked to design and construct the Care Coordination Performance Board, which will be used as an information and communication center for the department. But it isn't all work and no play for the healthcare providers in Alaska. With endless amounts of water, wilderness, and wildlife, a beautiful adventure always awaits. I was lucky enough to enjoy cruises, hikes, seaplanes, and even snorkeling. I got to see creatures from bald eagles to bears to orca whales, and I met an amazing group of like-minded individuals that are worth their weight in Alaskan gold. It can go without saying that a career in rural medicine here in Alaska is one that I am definitely considering after my experience in the Rural Immersion Institute of the North program. I'm just kind of curious when I they asked this with the other two students, did any of you guys stay with host families? Oh, we did. Uh -huh. Yes. yes again. Uh -huh. um, and, and did that, like, do you feel like that enhanced your experience while you're there? Can you talk a little bit about Oh, 100%. Yeah, absolutely. So in Ketchikan, we got to stay with a, a family, Joe and Susie Williams, and they are um, native Clinket, so we got to stay in Saxman. And being a part of that, we really got to experience not just, you know, our shadowing position, but we got pulled into the community. And our host dad, he even set up um, community events for us. We got to go out and do the snorkeling, do the cruises, see the town from a local, not from a tourist setting, and especially in an like, environment like Ketchikan where you get five cruise ships in every day, getting to have them with us made it amazing. And then getting to go home and, you know, having those family dinners and the Sunday morning church like services, it was incredible. And it really made Ketchikan not feel like a job shadow, but a home for the 10 days that we were there. Yeah. My question is, for, was it Melanie? Yeah. Um, you mentioned uh, village health aides in the mm -hmm. video. Yes. Uh, who are those people and uh, what are their backgrounds and how yeah. do they go on from becoming? Sure. So we, we learned a lot about community health aides, and I'm sure there are people in the room who know a lot more about it than me. So please uh, feel free to correct or um, add or whatever. But so the community health aides um, are not uh, uh, necessarily like trained um, outside of the village, but basically they're people from the community um, who come through a program that's coordinated through um, all over the state. And so they'll uh, get training at kind of different levels to be able to be the first responders on the scene whenever something happens um, in a rural village that is smaller than the places that we all shadowed. So they might not have um, even an emergency room. So uh, all of the, like the clinic picture that I showed up there, um, their facility is really uh, nice. I, I think one of the um, photos of the exam rooms is from there. So they have uh, like... I don't know, first responder kits, and they have a full exam room, and they have a, a dental exam room. Um, and so they have uh, kind of the resources so that when, um, like, the, the doctors from Kanakanak, where I shadowed, uh, do kind of visits, um, they can go there, and they talk to the community health aide. Um, and they're really the person who's kind of knows everyone who lives in the community, and they, so they have a sense of, well, this person keeps coming back with the same cold. I think that they might, you know need to go see someone else, or um, this person, uh, I don't know, if they get in a snow machine accident or something like that, then the community health aide is the person that calls the hospital and says, you need a medevac right, right now. So um, they're really uh, important to making all of the kind of coordinated care that we've all talked about happen, um, especially because even though we went to rural places, and I'm putting that um, 
I don't know, in quotes, uh, we had some people who said to us like, oh, you know, like those places aren't rural. The, yeah. you, the communities that, you know, have 50 uh, or 100 people, like those are the actually rural places and, and it's those places that are really challenging to get people care. So um, I'm rambling, but the community health aides um, make that happen. So we heard uh, about how that program is really great, um, that all those people really uh, do amazing work um, and that even though they, uh, you know, I, I don't know the um, all of the curriculum, but they go through like a month in Anchorage and then they have like refreshers and you can do different levels of community health aid training. Um, I think they're four. Uh, they, yeah, they kind of make it, make it all happen. You know more than you think you know. So, no. So there, the goal in my is that there is a, a community health aid um, at every rural village, um, or at yeah anywhere uh, that there can be. But I think that, uh, as you might imagine, it's uh, really a big job and it's a lot of responsibility when you're on call the entire time. Um, and the people that you are your patients might be your even more so than if you worked at the hospital might be your dad or your cousin or your teacher or something. So um, I think that. It's a lot of, puts a lot of strain on people. So you have to be very committed. So I think it's um, sometimes hard to get people, yeah, to fill positions or to get people to stay for a long time. But um, but at most, I think it, I guess I shouldn't say, I don't know. But it, at least at most of the places um, in the Bristol Bay region where I was, most of the villages do have at least one health aid. And um, along with that, you know, there's a whole behavioral health aid program. Yeah. Do you guys have any contact in your different types of behavioral health in general? Um, we went to Kenyak and we met a behavioral health aide there. I love the behavioral health aide at the Bethel Family Clinic. Mm -hmm. And when we talked to the behavioral health aide in Kenyak, it's very small, it's under 500 people. So when we got there, she was talking about how it's so hard to like have friends because you know everyone mm -hmm. and everyone kind of wants to know everything that's going on. So like when she's like going around in the store, people will come up to her and be like, oh, do you know so-and-so? And she has to kind of professionally reply and be like, oh, sorry, like we can't like this close information to you. So then she has only like four or five <laughs> friends through her husband at the school. And she isn't really allowed to have any other friends because when someone becomes her patient, she can't become her, their friend or else that becomes really tricky. And so she said it's very lonely because she does, she, has, she knows so much yet she can't disclose any of that information. Mm -hmm. so and being in a small community is super hard. Yeah. Her being a paper. There are also some dental health aids, I think, too. Or yeah, so, so there was one of those at Dillingham, but no behavior. So it, it sounds like a really large task. Do you think that the community health aids ultimately help the villagers feel, feel a little bit more comfortable around the positions and yeah, kind of helps personalize the care a little bit more? Yeah. Uh, does anyone else want to jump in? No. <laughs> um, I mean, it is my opinion that that's true, but I didn't talk to anyone. Um, at the Electnigate Clinic, besides the community health aid, so um, I think that definitely. But there, the all the physicians that I shadowed every day that they're on call at 1:15, they call the community health aides that are in the village. So every day they're hearing like everything, everyone, not necessarily everyone who walks through the door, but any anyone the community health aide like isn't sure about how to treat or they need a different kind of. I don't know, they need to know what kind of antibiotic to give them or something like that. So I think that that's definitely true. And I think that if the community health aides have a good relationship with the other providers who come in, then that's better for everyone. Hi, I'm the other Rachel from Oregon State University who is also majoring in pre-pharmacy <laughs> and is entering her senior year. Um, I got to enjoy the rural sites of Soldatna and Homer. Hi, my name is Ashton Shelton, and I'm currently attending Oklahoma State University. Um, I will be graduating in December with my degree in Human Development and Family Science, and I'm currently applying to physical therapy school. And I, my role site was Petersburg. Hi, I'm Tristan Krause. I'm from Amherst, Massachusetts. I just graduated from Ohio State with a Bachelor's of Science in Biology and uh, applying for medical school right now. Coming into the RIN program, I didn't know what to expect. 
after 51 hours of provider observation, two healthcare facilities, and one amazing Alaskan adventure, I know now I couldn't have expected how wonderful of an experience I was going to receive. As I landed in Anchorage on July 12th, I knew my adventure had begun. As we learned about Alaskan culture and Alaskan healthcare, I didn't know how relevant this information would be to my experience in my rural site since I was in a more urban setting. I was soon going to find out that even though I was in a more urban setting, all of this information would still apply. I was first placed in Soldana at Central Peninsula Hospital in their oncology unit. This is where I spent 20 hours in three days seeing how nurses could make an individual's treatment a little less painful. Every nurse knew every patient's name and did their best to cater to the patient and the patient's family's needs. These nurses worked with other providers to provide the best care possible. From Soldana, I went down to an eclectic art town with a fishing problem. This was the quaint town of Homer. Here I shadowed at Scott's Family Pharmacy, where I received a pharmacy experience like I never have had before. The pharmacist and pharmacy technicians worked nine hours a day, six days a week, trying their best to fulfill the pharmaceutical needs of the community. This is typically seen in giving patients the best price for their medications while still being able to keep the doors of the pharmacy open. Even though I was in larger cities, I saw the hardships healthcare can have on individuals when practicing medicine in the great state of Alaska. Stepping off the plane in Petersburg, I wasn't sure what to expect. I came with an open mind and ready for just about anything. However, what I experienced during my time in Petersburg was more than I could have ever hoped for. Petersburg is a charming little community located in Southeast Alaska. The town is known for its Norwegian culture and fishing industry. However, the best part of Petersburg is the people. From the moment Rachel and I arrived, we were welcomed with open arms. Each person we encountered was genuinely excited to have us visiting. This made our time all the more enjoyable. I quickly learned that Petersburg is a very close-knit community and everyone knows everyone. As a healthcare provider, this means your patients will most likely be familiar faces, maybe even a close friend or family member. I shadowed medical professionals who really knew their patients and strived to give them the best possible care. I believe they raise the standard of care to a whole new level. Being a small hospital on an island means that the Petersburg Medical Center has to work with what they have. They may not have many specialty areas, but they do have healthcare providers that go above and beyond to compensate. I watched a primary care doctor call upon her knowledge of optometry in order to diagnose a patient. I witnessed physical therapists provide one-on-one -on -one hour long therapy sessions where they were the direct monitors rather than a tech or PTA. I observed a public health nurse comb through vaccination records so she could send out reminders to families telling them which vaccinations their children needed and information on those vaccinations. Again and again, I was blown away by how hard these providers worked and how passionate they were about their jobs. I came into this experience hoping to determine whether or not my future lies in rural medicine. I can now move forward knowing this is the exact environment in which I wish to practice. I am beyond thankful for this experience and the valuable lessons I learned along the way. Bethel is a city in the tundra, a landscape of winding rivers and melting permafrost. It is home to the main hospital serving the yukon Kuskokwim region, an area about the size of Oregon containing several rural villages. The vast distances between the communities and hospitals present challenges in providing patients with the care that they need. I was interested in seeing how this care was achieved and how the duties of the providers broadened and became more flexible as a result of limited staffing. In Bethel, the range of responsibilities that providers encounter are much broader than what I have seen in the lower 48. Much of the time, the specialists that are needed are not available in emergency situations, and the providers who are present are responsible for either caring for the patient or stabilizing them so they can be sent to a hospital where the proper specialist is located. This is part of the reason why working here in the future is so appealing to me. 
Each day is different from the last, and you never quite know what to expect. When I told people in Anchorage that I was going out to Bethel, it seemed that no one had anything nice to say about the city. When I arrived, I didn't find myself agreeing with this at all. It's flat, and there's not much to do, but the tundra is beautiful. It's full of berries to eat and rivers to kayak in. A new fitness center complete with exercise classes and a pool has been a recent addition to the city, which is a great place for bettering the health of the residents, especially during the long, cold winters. The overall feeling of the city for me was that it was a kind and accepting community. People who I had never met before on the street always smiled and waved to me as we passed each other. I doubt that the people who told me that Bethel was a place to avoid had ever really been there themselves. For each of you, what was the most surprising thing about about what you experienced in your Um, Well, that's a very good question. Uh, I would have to say that even though I was in more urban touristy areas, I still noticed how the Native Alaskan culture influenced the healthcare provided, um, especially when those individuals had come into Scott's Family Pharmacy and maybe had a different way of communicating with the technicians and how there was almost a, a barrier there that each person had to cross to make sure that the care was provided accurately and effectively. Um, I think for me it was interesting because, I, like I said, I'm from Oklahoma and I actually grew up in a rural community. Um, but the difference between there and here in Alaska is in Petersburg I was on an island so there was no driving to the next town to um, go out to eat or go to a movie or um, you're really on that island and I think in terms of health care that means that you really have to work with what you have and I think that's so important and that was something that I saw over and over again and what I really talked about in my video as well um, just because a doctor can't take the easy route and just be like oh go see this specialist because for them that means they have to fly to Juneau or to Seattle or to Anchorage and um, so I think to those healthcare professionals they feel that it's so important to really um, try to do what they can like I said I worked with a doctor um, who had to perform like an eye exam and try to do a diagnosis and she had to call the ophthalmologist that was in Juno and try to figure everything out um, and she's a family care doctor so she just deals with so much more their scope of practice is just so broad and I think it's incredible um, I also thought it was really interesting I hadn't really thought about the fact that um, like Petersburg they don't deliver babies there um, so you have to go somewhere else um, to deliver about two weeks before your due date so I found that really interesting as well and kind of an obstacle that they have to deal with so yeah uh, mine was definitely like the kindness, and it's not that I thought you know Bethel was uh, like a horrible mean place, but like everyone, <laughs> everyone was just very very nice, and just even, like no one knew it, even if they didn't know each other, everyone smiling, waving, uh, helping you out if you need directions, um, which happened, and the, just I don't know, everyone's just really friendly like everywhere, um, and the whole sense of community and the city because you, it's not on the road system, so it's this island of a city, um, in the middle of the tundra, and everyone it's just has a Huge sense of community. Everyone helps each other out. They pull people pull together, like that uh, fitness center they made. They they were, I think they pulled together and campaigned for that for a very long time before they could get it, and uh, and eventually it happened. And uh, I think coming from you know the East Coast where there's like Boston, New York, it's kind of like everyone's on their own mission on the sidewalk, you know. And it was a very different feeling there, and I liked it a lot. And, yeah. I totally feel that energy. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, another um, question. My question is about food. Uh, so, <laughs> while you guys were here in Alaska, or in the villages, is there anything new that you guys tried? Or just go back to the whole group. Is there anything interesting that you tried? Or something good? Aside from Mrs. Stu. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything good that you guys tried? Did anyone try Muk Tuk? No, I was so mad. They didn't really like it. I cut it. <laughs> <laughs> it was like bacon. <laughs> so. um, in Ketchikan, I was staying in Saxman, which is the native town, and one of the dinners we had was a authentic clinket meal. And one of the things that they serve, and they serve it on a huge table with um, newspaper on it, is little tiny heron eggs, little fish eggs. And how they catch them is they take branches and they put them in the water. And then the eggs crumble up on it, 
pull it out and you've got these clumps of just baby eggs and when you eat them it sounds like you're chewing on bubble wrap it's just like pop 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 <laughs> but yeah that was definitely a unique experience for me getting to have you know fish eggs for the first time and then it was with uh, hooligan grease so the hooligan fish like they took the grease let it ferment and cook and if you like fish you must really like fish <laughs> to like this hooligan grease <laughs> As, as you envision yourself in the future as a provider, has anything you've experienced during this changed um, or evolved how you see yourself providing care? Like you had a vision of before and now you, you know, something's a little different or you came to a, a different conclusion than you had previously about how you're going to provide care. Um, I guess I can take that one first. Um, for me, um, I've shadowed in a couple of different physical therapy clinics before, um, and one thing I noticed back home, and this is what I just kind of thought was the norm, um, I shadowed like at a clinic that would have two PETs, um, and then they would have a handful of techs, and they would double book, or they would have multiple patients in there at once. Um, and so they would have the techs doing like the exercises, and at the end they would do the massage and that kind of stuff. Um, and so there wasn't a ton of one-on-one -on -one, um, patient care. Um, and I also thought that the PTs weren't really able to monitor their patients probably as well as they should have because there was a lot going on. Um, and not that I didn't appreciate that experience, and I think the PTs are probably great, but something that I really noticed here, um, and we also shadowed yesterday in Anchorage, and so I saw it both in an urban setting and in the rural setting, is they don't do that, or at the places I was at, they didn't. Um, they just spent time one-on-one -on -one with those patients. They didn't have techs, um, and so they were doing the full care and the full monitoring, and so they were knowing exactly if what they were doing was making their patient better. Um, and I just, like when I practice, that's how I want that one on care. If I get the degree, like, I want to do it all, I don't. So I just, yeah, that was something I thought was really important. I mean, so uh, as far as, you know, working in a small community like Bethel, um, like we were talking about before, just knowing everybody and then also being a provider can get kind of awkward, but at the same time, I was excited to, I really am interested in working in Bethel and part of that reason is how close you get to know everybody. So I really went to emergency medicine. So the fact that you know a lot of the people who might be coming in, I mean, you, there's so much information you have to get really fast. And if you are a part of the community, you can get it so much faster. I mean, if you already know the person, if you see them around, you know what they do, what they like, like just having that background, I think that would change a lot about what you would do as an emergency medicine physician. So. Um. For me personally, it's just the knowing patients by name and not by a number. Because when I've ever shadowed down in the lower 48 in Oregon, it was always who's next on the list, what is their prescription number, let's get them through the system and get them out the door. Here it was really everybody took time to understand what was happening and they were very willing to answer any and all questions patients had and on a first name basis. So when you walked through the doors of the pharmacy or you walked into oncology, you were greeted by your first name and not by, okay, this is where you're going today and we're just gonna treat you and send you on your way. So I think for me that was very valuable to know that you can still provide very great care, but it's easier for the patients knowing that they are now kind of a person and not a next on somebody's list. So flexibility too. Flexibility is huge. You can't, I mean, if you're working in that kind of situation, you can't be stuck in your, what you like and how you like it and what you want to do because you don't know what, I mean, what responsibility is going to be put on your plate because there's not people, there aren't people to, to the specialists there, they might not be there. So you're going to have to do it if it's an urgent thing. So if you're not willing to step out of your comfort zone or be willing to change how you do things, then... Yeah, it might not be for you, and I, but I really like that, and that really intrigued me, and I think that's why it would be a good fit for me. Uh, so after coming back back from the rural sites, we ha also had this opportunity to shadow in uh, hospitals in Anchorage, and I was allocated to North Providence Hospital and up uh, uh, in the in the Department of Infection Prevention, and I will, uh, so I'm planning to apply to this degree in ma Masters of Epidemiology in Infectious Epidemiology next year, and uh, I have never shadowed uh, an infection preventionist before, 
and I got this opportunity yesterday to be with him, to be with all all those people in that department for an entire day. And the staff was very welcoming, and they were trying hard to make my make my time worthwhile there. So they actually arranged my arranged a visit to CDC office near the uh, airport. And CDC is like my dream job, and I really <laughs> want to go there at some point of time. So I could I could uh, I did get the tour there in that CDC office, and it was incredible. So that definitely uh, solidified my interest in uh, infectious epidemics. Yeah. Well, if there's no other questions, we're, oh, one more, <laughs> Mari, all right. I, uh, well, I just, just for everybody who participated this year, is there anybody who, who any of you interested in coming back specifically to Alaska to, to provide care? Well, we all feel that there should be a RIN part two <laughs> in, the, in the winter so we can all experience a winter here in Alaska. <laughs> it might be here. Yeah. Yeah. Would everybody sign up for RIN part two? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right.